Stations, if you encounter any technical issues related to this live show broadcast, please call our trouble hotline at 336 464 1806. Mark, four minutes until airtime for this live show broadcast. Your next time here will come with three minutes until airtime on the Rice Sports Network. Mark, three minutes until airtime for this live show broadcast. Your next time cue will come with two minutes until airtime on the Rice Sports Network. Stations, if you encounter any technical issues related to this live show broadcast, please call our trouble hotline at 336 464 1806. Mark, two minutes until airtime for this live show broadcast. Your next time cue will come with one minute until airtime on the Rice Sports Network. Stations, we're coming up on one minute until air time. One minute in five, four, three, two, mark. One minute stations, one minute until air time for this live show broadcast. Studios, when you hear, please start your archive recording. Coming up on 30 seconds until airtime on my mark. Mark, 30 seconds. Your next and final time cue will be with 15 seconds until airtime. Coming up on 15 seconds until airtime. Mark, 15 seconds stations. Have fun. The following is a Learfield presentation of the Rice Sports Network.
Rice Sports Network from Learfield, live from Acme Oyster House. Welcome to the Mike Bloomgren Show. Acme Oyster House, life's more fun with seafood. The Mike Bloomgren Show is brought to you by The Parking Spot. We have airport parking covered. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716. Lighting up Rice University and Houston for over 100 years. Now, alongside Coach Bloomgren, here's the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back. We are live here at Acme Oyster House, a great crowd. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. And it is Rice Football Talk with Dunleavy Family Head Football Coach of our Blue and Gray, Mike Bloomgren, coming up in just a matter of seconds. Um, well, got a lot of good stuff to talk about. The Owls getting that W over the McNeese Cowboys, 52-10 to 10 in that home opener. The uh, NASA Space Day. Did you take advantage of that uh, great NASA uh, exhibit they had there behind us in that parking lot? That was some really, really cool stuff. The uh, the unis uh, going going viral earlier in the week. I know the guy, hey, we got a couple players. We'll speak to that coming up in uh, just a second. And uh, it was a, a great, great weekend all the way around. Um, here's to Red Beans and Rice University, Acme Oyster House, proud sponsor of Rice Football. After the game, come join us for a fried seafood platter, a shrimp po' boy, or a dozen char-grilled oysters. Acme, the best little oyster house in Texas. I, I just could not help myself. I had to inhale some meat pies earlier. Had a light lunch, so I allowed myself that. And the uh, Boom Boom Shrimp is what the big man's going to get afterwards that is some uh, great great stuff uh great drinks they have a bar area as you come in just to the left there's a uh, a separate bar uh cornered off in one section this wide open uh, space then when you walk in there's a, a big staircase that goes up private room they can host different parties and then we have tyler and Raphael in the uh yeah there they are again my guys shucking some oysters shucking away hundreds there you go Raphael. Um, <laughs> said his um, wife clipped. We, we got him on social media last week and uh, making him social media famous. But the Owls and the Raging Cajuns coming up. Another home game Saturday. Nate Walter and I have that broadcast. The Owls game day app, riceowls.com. Six o'clock, the Houston Methodist pregame. And we return our in the booth feed again. Owls Facebook and YouTube pages, 95.3 in stadium feed as well. The ESPN Plus telecast. Our buddy David Salt's been on the call with the great Chris Mikoski coming up on Saturday. Here on the show tonight, as I mentioned in moments, we have Dunleavy Family at football coach Mike Bloomgren. After that, we've got the quarterback and wide receiver combo. They hooked up for a few yards this past weekend. The uh, California cool TJ McMahon on the show. TJ, come on, TJ. We're going to have fun uh, coming up in a little bit. Big Bad Bradley Rosner also on the show. And then we stick with that offensive theme. We have Coach Tui, uh, OC, Marcus Tui Asasopo, uh, talking about not only that great game Saturday, but we haven't heard from him in this format uh, this year. We've got a lot to uh, discuss about the Owls' offense. And then Coach comes back, and we preview those uh, Louisiana Ragin Cajun First-year head coach Michael uh, Desmoreau, co-OC last season, 36 years young, uh, former record-setting quarterback at uh, Louisiana Lafayette, it was called when, when he played. They've got the nation's longest winning streak at 16 games coming in. They lost their first game of last year, ran the table, won the Sun Belt, won their bowl game uh, against Marshall off the top of the noggin, and then they've won their first two games of this year after losing a lot. So that will be a fun one coming up Saturday night under the lights at Rice Stadium. But enough of me yapping. You want to hear the boss man coming up next. We'll hear Dunleavy family head football coach Mike Bloomgren back at Acme Oyster House. More of the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. Hey, Oscar. Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar. We're talking spokes oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char grilled, a seafood platter, a po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come at me, bro. Not you. Back in the oyster house. Life's more fun with seafood. Build it, price it, own it. Go online and see Shoppers and John Deere's new way to get a John Deere tractor just the way you want it. Google Shop as John Deere and let your John Deere tractor story begin. 
build the tractor you want with the attachments you need to get your work done. Price it. No hidden costs and financing options available for any budget. Own it, and shoppers will deliver your John Deere tractor. Build it, price it, own it. It's Shoppers' new way to get the John Deere tractor you want your way. Shoppers, all things John Deere. We interrupt your top 40 hits to issue this alert from the Carbach Brewing Company. In our efforts to brew our distinct and popular Hoppadillo IPA, we have unwittingly created a monster. A monster with an insatiable thirst. A monster that will not stop until it gets what it wants. An ice-cold Hoppadillo IPA. Just like the one I'm holding in my hand. Bold. Flavorful. Dry hopped. Irresistible. <laughs> Sweet and merry! Hoppadillo. Find it before it finds you. Bravely brewed in Texas by the Carbock Brewing Company. Another season of women's and men's college sports is underway. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at thedirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show, live at Acme Oyster House. Here again, the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back here, Acme Oyster House. I mean, there's only one location in Houston, but it's 1201 Westheimer, just off that Westheimer and Montrose intersection. Uh, it is a great spot, centralized and just minutes away from campus. Here now with Dunleavy Family Head Football Coach of our Rice Owls, Mike Bloomgren. Coach, how are things? Going great. Going great. You know, uh, the fun is in the winning, as we talk about all the time. We got a chance to enjoy a victory locker room Saturday night, and uh, now we're on to the next challenge. So uh, things are going really well. 52-10, to 10, you uh, take down McNeese. Um, and ironically, in a game where you had the uh, offense put up 52 points, I want to start with the defense because they create five turnovers in that game and, and really – um, the first couple drives stalled, I guess, but then the pick set up that short, uh, short score. And then, but the defense really set the tone from the start. Special teams contributed. It was just a total team win, was it not? Yeah, I think that's exactly right, JP. You look at special teams and, and you win that battle. You know, we had almost 10 yards, uh, more field position as a starting field position for our offense after a kick than they did. So that's always a good stat and played pretty clean on teams. Had the one missed kick that we got to find a way to put through when we can rally our offense, you know, talking about your two guests today, you know, you had TJ to Bradley Rosner right before half to put us in field goal range. And we got to capitalize on that. That's what you want to do in a two minute drive is put that pressure on and let them leave the field thinking about how we just did it to them again. And uh, so we got to hit that defensively. It was an outstanding day. The five turnovers, you know, the, the two interceptions, including one going back to the house by Gabe Taylor. And then having the three fumble recoveries, that was outstanding. They also had a fourth down stop, which is a turnover, you know, and as well. And then the offense really lit it up. You know, it was a lot of fun to, to watch those guys go out there and perform and, and be so efficient on third and fourth down, six of six in the red zone, just taking advantage of a lot of things. And, you know, almost 300 yards passing and I think almost 200 yards rushing, if not over. So pretty good day at 209 rushing. So a good day at the office, man. Um, and just so proud of these kids for what they did and, and in terms of how they prepared, but also being able to go out there and perform on game day. It was awesome. And for Gabe, it was one of the longest uh, interception returns for a touchdown in Rice history, top five, I know. And I heard him talk on the podium after the game, and he's like, I knew I was going to score. I was like, I didn't know that, but I'm glad he he had that confidence. But as that developed, I mean, that was a good turning point early on. It was never put away that early, but he – uh, he was very confident, and, and he's shown us. I can't wait to get him up here because he's going to be great to talk to. He had, he had the confidence, and, and he sure delivered at that right time. He did. And, you know, like we've said since the whole time we've had Gabe, and even since we started recruiting him, the ball loves Gabe Taylor. <laughs> and uh, so it loved him again. He took advantage of it and ended up taking that thing to the house. And he had some good blocks down the field as well. You know, guys like Josh Piercy running 60 yards to screen somebody off so he can get into that end zone. and. Uh, it's just, again, it's a lot of fun. It's it's the joy for each other. It's these guys playing so hard for each other when they have the ball and when they don't. It's uh, those, those are just fun to be a part of, but you're so right. What a big play by Gabe. Yeah, we've got uh, Bradley Rosner in a second, one former Needville Blue Jay star. Another one was big for you on the line, Blake Vanish, uh, career high five tackles. Um, they, they ran it so much, so, yeah, that opens it up for more plays to be had there at the line. But Blake had a, a great game in there, and so did he, Ken, underneath uh, one and a half sacks. 
Yeah, that was a lot of fun to see those guys get after the quarterback the way they did. The other thing about Blake is, you know, Blake and Roz are very different body types. It's like Roz is stretched really tall and Blake is stretched really wide. Uh, but all, all jokes aside, like Blake's coming out of the stack. He's running things down down the field, and he is just playing with such a great motor. Uh, so I'm really enjoying the impact Blake's having when he does get reps in there. Uh, e. Kenna now 14 sacks in his career. So he's seen a lot of double teams in there. What, what have you liked about him in these first two games? Yeah, one of the clips, well, the clip he got the sack on, uh, the individual sack on today, you know, he lines up on a tight end, and, and I just joked around with the team in the team meeting. I'm like, what do you think this tight end's thinking right now when he has a Kenna <laughs> lining up across from him? And then, you know, he, he whips the tight end's butt, and then he's running the quarterback down. I was like, and then if you're that quarterback, what are you thinking right now? So uh, I, I just think he's doing such a good job. You know, we haven't really had to use his position flexibility that much in terms of putting him in a three technique, so we've been able to leave him at the edge mostly, and he's doing a great job in the run game and the pass game. Uh, finally, on the defense, what'd you like about responding to a, a really good running quarterback uh, when they had Ransom come in there, number three, um, versus the two different styles, Kadem, who who was passing it, trying to get it downfield, but Ransom made some really good plays that you guys adjusted to. He did, and, and he's a great player. You know, when you got a quarterback that transfers in from Virginia Tech or Ransom George, uh, transferring in from Georgia Southern, and you know he's a true dual threat guy. Like, we knew going into the game what that would look like, and I just thought those guys did a great job. Our defense did a great job getting their hands around him. And, and not for nothing, like, Ransom's a big individual. Like, he is a, he looks like a middle linebacker playing quarterback, a Cam Newton kind of guy. So he was not easy to bring down. He was awfully sudden, and so I'm proud of our guys, the way they were able to corral him. On the offensive side, uh, Ari Broussard, 17 t- uh, rushes for 71 yards, his third touchdown in the first uh, two games. Steady Eddie Ari. Uh, didn't always have some of the holes, but he, he burst a couple of those intermediate runs and another Ari Broussard night at the office, huh? It was. It was. I think it was really consistent for him to have that kind of production. But you got to also look at the guys we're throwing in the game, whether it's Cam Montgomery for special plays or Dean Connors for special plays, or even as the game uh, was going in the fourth quarter, love getting Juma in there and Uriah West. Uriah West did a great job feeding his pads to people and, and keeping drives alive. Yeah, uh, I reference this on the broadcast, how when I talked to C.J. Anderson, when I first met him asking about the running back court, Araya was the first name you mentioned as far as having a really good camp and had a lot of experience at Jacksonville State, but just a little slowed. What what does that do to the running game, getting another versatile kind of – he runs similar to Ari, but he's obviously a different guy, that, that great bruising style. What does he do well? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think he's a bruising runner that also runs the six and seven, the wide zone play really well. That's what he's kind of grown up in at Jacksonville State. So him bringing that – Seeing that zone play really well and then having the ability anytime he gets his pad squared up and the hole to run over somebody like Ari is pretty cool. It's cool to have two of those guys. So if if you break it down, you really got those two bruisers there. You've got Cam and Dean Connors that can do a lot of scat back type things, but also can run between the tackles. And then you got Juma, who is kind of um, kind of a joker, is wild kind of thing. You know, he's our kick returner. He can do a lot from the backfield. You saw him catch the last touchdown out of the backfield. Yeah. So um, uh, really does Juma does a lot of things really well, and it's good to see him start to have some success in game again. Yeah, first career receiving touchdown for Juma. Good to see that. And with uh, a couple of our featured guests tonight, let's make them blush a little. Great game. Uh, T.J. McMahon, career, first career start, 274 yards. Can't rattle them, Coach. California cool. California cool, man. We've said that about Teach for a long time. Uh, two really cool stats I want to throw at you uh, that Chuck Poole gave me tonight. It's the first time a Rice quarterback threw for four TDs in their first start since Vernon Glass in 1950 in the opening game in Rice Stadium. Wow. So that's uh, that's many moons ago, and, and I'm great that TJ was able to do that and then also rush for one in this game. And then, uh, you know, another cool stat with Teej is just that uh, in his last six quarters at Rice Stadium, he's 32 of 49 for 465 yards and six tuds. So I'm glad we're playing at Rice Stadium again this week, and I'm glad he'll prepare as a starter before our next away game so uh, we can get him all those reps. Uh, but I'm glad we're in Rice Stadium. If he's going to keep balling like that, he's going to make us all look good. Yeah, and we talked about this some right before the game, but a full week of practice for him. How, how vital, and maybe like dorks like me look into it too much, but having that full rep, knowing, hey, I'm getting most, if not all the reps, how much of a difference does that make? JP, I think it's all the difference. And, and that's one thing I wanted to make sure everybody understood last week. Because when I told you it was neck and neck with him and Wiley all through training camp, it was back and forth and back and forth. And then, you know, it's so unfortunate when you get like 20% of the practice reps, and then you end up having to play three quarters of the game against a really good USC team. 
And, and I didn't feel like that was TJ's best foot forward. I didn't think he was as prepared. Not that he wasn't prepared mentally. I know he knew what to do, but he just didn't get those kinesthetic reps during the week. And I really thought we'd get a different result when he took all those reps as a starter last week. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, from the mental standpoint, how is Wiley doing? I know it, it, was, it was tough for him to, to leave the USC game, but and, and being out this past week, just how, how's he doing personally? Oh, I think he's doing well. And, uh, you know, that's another great question you can ask Teach. But I, I think that the way he's supporting him, the way he's supporting our whole team on the sideline, he's still leading. He's acting like a coach and a captain, like, like he should be. And so it, it's a lot of fun to see. All right. Uh, Bradley Rosner, a great game, and he'll be up here in a couple of segments. Uh, again, something I can ask him, but uh, – Th- almost three years since he'd been in the end zone, he's very familiar with way back when. How, how much of an extra dimension is that adding him to the receiving core again, old vet? Yeah, I think Raz will agree with me that it's about dang time. You know, he's put in a lot of work between that day and this one to make this a reality. And, uh, you know, some, some football things happen, right? Injuries happen as part of this game sometimes. But the way he's come back from it and the way he's actually the best player he's ever been today, I, I have all the respect in the world for Roz and what he's done on this journey. So he told me his recruiting story in the offseason, uh, and, and I love those recruiting stories just like I love coaching tree stories, but just how uh, great is it? I mean, it, it deserves a refresher getting getting a guy like Rosner here. Uh, you never take it for granted, and you, you can find guys like that from the junior college level at that too. Yeah, I, I will let him share that recruiting okay. story from his vantage point. I just remember them trying to explain to me where this town was in Texas. And then I remember, right? yeah, I remember talking to Roz. I was like, hey, can we fly you in this time? And he was like, I don't know if I can get to an airport. Like, I was like, where are you? You know, like, help me out. But uh, no, look, I, I think uh, the recruiting journey was well worth it to get him here. And he had an interesting story in junior college. You know, like his story was not just like, hey, I'm going to go there for two years and I'm going to bounce. You know, he had he dealt with an injury there and had to work his way back and earn it back on the field there. And, uh, gosh, he's really earned everything in his college career. And that's why, like, seeing him celebrating the end zone was freaking really cool for me. And, and especially the way he did it, where he snatched the ball away from the DB. You know, Brad was like, no, no, that's my ball. I got this. <laughs> One other cool thing that I don't know if people are tracking on, I don't know if, we've, if I've even said it publicly, but the play that he scored that first touchdown on was called Artemis. <laughs> and uh, it, it's a play that with the NASA space theme. It was really cool. And the signal for it was the was the rocket going up to the sp- up to space. And uh, we called that one. TJ gave him a ball, and, and Roz went and got it for that first touchdown. Really cool. Wow, very cool. Any um, other thoughts on the weekend? Again, we talked before the game. How cool was that with NASA Space Day, the unis that got the social media attention, and obviously only one of the biggest events in our nation's history happening on that turf, I guess, 60 years ago. Uh, that would be today, yeah, on the 12th. On the 12th, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was really fun to be a part of. I, I thought, number one, the unis were amazing. Like, the ultimate look good, feel good, play good. And I think we <laughs> saw that come to fruition, so that was a lot of fun. And uh, You know, they just the detail on those jerseys was awesome. And then, you know, you keep up with everything that went on in our stadium today to commemorate it, from our president speaking to the administrator of NASA being there and, and uh, having kind of that thing reenacted. 60 years later, yeah. just a really cool weekend for Rice University, Rice football, and, and NASA. Yeah. Not many schools with that combination of the no. athletics and the, the history like that. Hey, Coach, thanks. We'll be back more, and i uh, got a lot of guys to get to. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Dunleavy Family and Football Coach of Rice Owls, Mike Bloomgren. Stay tuned. Coming up next, we go to T.J. McMahon back at Acme Oyster House with more from the Owls quarterback of the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. Buy the best for rest at Shoppers. Shoppers has the lowest prices on John Deere tractors. Don't leave money on the table with the best tractor at the best prices of the year. Shoppers makes it so easy with just a few clicks at our website. We dare you to compare. Go see our specials by Googling Shoppers at S-H-O-P-P-A-S. Build the tractor package of your dreams with our Build It, Price It, Own It tool. And we'll deliver your John Deere tractor for free. The best for less at Shoppers. All things John Deere. Double Tree by Hilton Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites is the preferred hotel for anybody visiting the medical center, the museum district, or Rice University. We offer the largest suites in the medical center, complete with full kitchens, and our full-service restaurant and outdoor pool will make your stay complete. We look forward to having you experience the Double Tree by Hilton Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites soon. And if you need a group rate or 10 or more rooms, don't forget to call 713-528-7744. That's 713-528-7744. Howdy Homemade Ice Cream is here. 
Howdy is an ice cream shop in Katy, Texas that makes ice cream in-house and has a unique mission to employ individuals that are differently abled. Stop by and enjoy some ice cream. With every scoop you buy, you help support employment for special needs. Coming to Rise Athletics venues in the fall. Houston, we have a cocktail. All hands canned cocktails are made with six times distilled craft vodka at a sturdy 10% ABV to ensure you never have to sacrifice the quality of your provisions. Now available in six natural flavors, including raspberry lemonade, ruby red grapefruit, cherry limeade, cranberry, and vodka soda. Vodka Tonic Classics. Follow the adventure on Instagram at, at Drink All Hands and try these bar strength cocktails for yourself for the next game. All hands, damn fine cocktails. Proud sponsor of Rice Athletics. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you gotta park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. You're listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. Yes, yes, yes. Tyler James McMahon, a.k.a. TJ, joining us here on the high table. One of his big receiving targets, Bradley Rosner, joins us next segment. TJ, how's life? Life's good, man, you know? Yeah. Can't, uh, can't complain about anything. Yeah, you're always smiling. You got that California cool air, as Coach was uh, seconding to uh, discuss first. I mean, thoughts on your uh, your first start. Uh, Coach was mentioning all the uh, the stats coming with us, which I know you don't pay too much attention to, but big improvement from USC. Thoughts on that first start? Yeah, I mean, it was awesome. Um, our coaches did a great job getting me ready uh, for the game, and then my teammates uh, executed. So they did a lot of the work. I just, you know, had to go out there and execute and take what they give me, and uh, – you know, they bailed me out on a lot of things. So I have great teammates, great coaches. What would you think about the swag? Oh, the uniforms are awesome. I'm really glad that we actually got to keep them. So, yeah. Okay. That's my next question. You get some kind of memento from that, the stickers, all the good stuff. Yeah, we got to keep them. I'll probably give it to my parents as a gift. So, yeah, <laughs> Christmas check, off, check yeah. off the list. Yeah, frame it. Um, so look good, feel good, play good, right? Uh, what was that like going back to USC? And, and unfortunately, you got in a game earlier because of, of the reason you got into it because of Wiley's injury. What was that playing, what, 45 minutes away from home? What was that like for you? Uh, well, I had a good amount of my family come out, so um, it was nice that they got to see me play a little bit. Um, I mean, it wasn't uh, anything too crazy, but, yeah, the Coliseum, um, you know, it's a cool environment to play in, so, yeah. Yeah, didn't you say – I'm forgetting that you went to some games growing up there. Yeah, I mean, I went to a couple uh, here and there, but uh, nothing too crazy. Yeah. Yep. What, what was different about coming home, having the full week of prep, like Coach and I were talking about, and, and making that difference in the home opener? Yeah, I mean, like uh, Coach Bloom alluded to earlier, um, you know, getting to be able to go through the actual reps and stuff like that, um, you know, physically and also, you know, the mental and the mental part also combined together. It made it a lot easier, you know, going out there and just playing. Um, when you have the mental reps only, you can't really physically execute. You don't know what you did wrong maybe in practice and what you need to fix. So um, that was kind of nice. You know, I could go rep it out and be like, okay, hey, I need to make this adjustment, this adjustment, or this adjustment. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So in camp, the big storyline was obviously you and Wiley. Wiley or you. Um, discuss how – and, and you, you both said something enlightening and complimentary to the other when I was asking you in different settings, different days and different weeks, I think. But how, how did that help each of you? And, and you in that situation to be able to have games like that and that, that competition bred that success. We saw that on the field uh, Saturday night. Well, I mean, it's really the uh, old saying, iron sharpens iron. Um, you know, Wiley had made me have to elevate my game every single day. I knew, hey, I can't take a day off. Um, so it was neck and neck, and I mean, just the back and forth constantly. So it was, I think it was good for uh, both of us. It made us, uh, you know, compete and uh, elevate our game. Had to be Coach Wiley last week. How, how did he help you and progress in, into that game and – and, and I don't know how long, hopefully we'll get him back soon, but just having him in your ear too has to has to be rewarding. What's that like? Yeah, I mean, um, he's like an extra coach out there, an extra set of eyes um, telling me, hey, they're doing this, be aware of this, you know, helping me out, seeing it at the game. And, you know, a guy that's actually played for us, been in the system a long time, it's been awesome. You know, he's been great, supportive. So you have, as I love tracking guys and how they get to certain places, uh, your path of rice, uh, not unique to some guys coming from JUCO, but – uh, discuss going to Mississippi State, right? 
but then going out west, kind of back home, but then ending up almost almost in the middle there, found your, your new home here in Houston. Yeah, um, so out of high school, uh, didn't have a lot of uh, scholarship offers, so I went and walked on to Mississippi State. Um, you know, read the, read the writing on the wall. It was probably going to work out. I said, you know what, I've put in a lot of work. I want to give myself more of a chance. Came back, went to junior college, um, and then uh, Rice uh, recruited me, and then I was like, you know what, this feels like home. Yeah, but you would not be here in this chair, perhaps, if the Owls weren't scouting a punter at your junior college. Do I remember that right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, so uh, one of our old uh, special teams coordinators looking for a kicker, um, and you know our heck and our recruiting guy said, "Yeah, I also have this quarterback if you guys are interested." So <laughs> that's uh, that's just how it worked out. Yeah, it seems like it worked out. So what have you liked about coming to Houston? Now I was looking back. Uh, I'm not. Don't think I'm too creepy, but I was looking for some uh, some prep info on you and. You signed, what, December of 19, right? Yes, sir. So you're one of the early signees uh, right back when they just started having that. And then the world comes to a standstill uh, just a few months after that. So how did you go from getting here, getting used to a new city with everything locked down? Like, I mean, like everybody else was too, but just uh, trying to, oh, how do I play this Division One quarterback here at a new place? Yeah, um, COVID definitely, uh, you know, kind of put a shock to everybody. But, uh, yeah, it came out here. I think I was here for – maybe two and a half months, uh, you know, in Houston, still getting used to everything, figuring it all out. And then, boom, I went back home for the whole quarantine. And then I came back in uh, June or July and then, you know, just had to, you know, take it bit by bit and just get used to being in Houston like every, and being at Rice University. And what are you studying? Uh, I actually graduated with a, my undergrad in sport management and I'm getting my MBA and I start classes October. That's right. That's yep. right. I remember you telling me that now. What has challenged you most uh, here at Rice? I know any any other classes that you liked and remember that you say, ah, I wouldn't take that again, or uh, was it all in the positive? A lot of the statistics class, um, you know, math is, uh, you know, math's not the easiest uh, for some people. Um, you know, you got to put a lot more work, but uh, yeah, I mean, classes weren't ever too hard. I mean, I always managed them and you got good grades. Uh, are you a running quarterback that can throw or a, a guy with a, a throwing quarterback so to speak, that can run. They're on quarterback that can run. Okay. Yep. Good. Quick, quick on the draw there. Like I remember asking you a few weeks ago, who do you, do you pattern your game after some other quarterback? Is all that instinctual? What, where do you think that uh, playing style comes from? Um, I don't. I mean, I couldn't really, you know, put it spot on. But I think just uh, naturally, I've always been a little bit, uh, you know, I'll compare to my brother. Like my brother was a pocket passer in high school, and then me, I was a little bit more athletic. So. I always said, you know, hey, work on the pocket stuff and then, you know, also use your athletic ability. You know, that would also help out in the end. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, same brother that, okay, plays a little baseball, yeah, right? Yeah, a little bit of it. So would you say you're the biggest Colorado Rockies fan in Houston? Have to say so, right? Uh, I'm the biggest Ryan McMahon fan in Houston. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, uh, but you don't watch the games. That, uh, that took me when you told me that a few weeks ago. Explain. I, I get it. I get it. I know baseball folks too, but why don't you watch your brother's games starting – uh, second baseman for the Rockies, by the way. You didn't know. Uh, yeah, uh, third baseman now. Third um, baseman, I guess what's up? Yes, sir. Um, it just uh, whenever I watch, uh, you know, they just don't uh, do as well. So I try to, you know, give my best. I'm like, hey, it's bad juju. You know, baseball players are really uh, superstitious. <laughs> so I try to help out with that. But he doesn't tell you not to watch. No, he doesn't. Okay. No, he doesn't care. But I keep up uh, on social media and I'll text him after the game, check in. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Roz. Uh, equal fire. He gets some back at you. Tell us something we might not know about uh, old man Roz here. Uh, something about Roz. I think if you were to cut him open, a lot of cane sauce would come out instead of blood. Okay. <laughs> yep. But, uh, um, Roz and I actually were roommates for a little bit. Uh, guy's great. Great roommate. Um, very easy to get along with. And, uh, he loves to play Uno and Catan. Okay. I didn't see. He'll, I'll get the same question to him too. So, um, talk, talk about playing Louisiana and, the, the defense you've seen, I mean, obviously got a, a lot more games left in this season, but what are the challenges with them? I know early, early looking at their, their tape. Yeah, I mean, uh, they have guys with a lot of, with, uh, sorry, with a lot of experience. Um, you know, but we're going to come out there. We're going to game plan them. Um, I think we match up really well against them. So it will be a fun, uh, fun battle to go out there with them. Hey, thanks a lot. Yep, thank you very much. Appreciate it. The yep. one and the only TJ McMahon. Thanks to him joining us here. Uh, back more, that other side of the wide receiver duo, Bradley Reisner, back at Acme Oyster House. More of the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. Hey, Oscar. Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar. We're talking spokes oysters for Acme Oyster House. You've probably seen us on TV. 
My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char-grilled, a seafood platter or po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come at me, bro. Not you. Back in the oyster house. Life's more fun with seafood. Double Tree by Hilton Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites is the preferred hotel for anybody visiting the Medical Center, the Museum District, or Rice University. We offer the largest suites in the Medical Center, complete with full kitchens, and our full-service restaurant and outdoor pool will make your stay complete. We look forward to having you experience the Double Tree by Hilton Houston Medical Center Hotel and Suites soon. And if you need a group rate or 10 or more rooms, don't forget to call 713-528-7744. That's 713-528-7744. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo! Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com for Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. Hey, it's JP here to tell you that, yes, there's more Rice House content out there for you to consume. Subscribe and download the official podcast of Rice Athletics, Rice Owls Insider. Rice Owls Insider provides a unique new look at a variety of head coaches, players, and other integral voices inside the Rice Athletics Department. Plus, you can find archived coaches shows as well. For the best in Rice House content, subscribe to Rice Owls Insider, the official podcast of Rice Athletics. Available on Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Highlighting the owls on the gridiron. Welcome back to the Mike Bloomgren Show. Twin bed. <laughs> Welcome back. I think we are back, right? Yes, indeed. Here at Acme Oyster House, they have a big sign painted on there. World famous New Orleans po' boys. Those are amazing. And uh, they got a lot of New Orleans specialties, salads, appetizers. I, I split my meal in two. I had the meat pies, and then I'm having the uh, boom boom shrimp. Uh, coming up in a bit, of course, famous for their raw and char-grilled oysters. Uh, joined right now by uh, number two on a Rice Owls roster, a uh, former Needville Blue Jays star. This is all off the top of my head. The Cisco Fighting Wranglers, Wranglers yeah. star. Uh, it is the one and only uh, Bradley Roster. How's it going? About dang time, about, right? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, we were joking in the off season. I was like, have you ever been on the show? And because of the way that stupid pandemic uh, lined mm-hmm. up, uh, we, we somehow never never had you on. But what was that feeling uh, getting back into the end zone, not once but twice the other, uh, the other night in, in drastically different types of scoring plays? It was the, – the first one, honestly, was a, a sigh of relief. You know, it's been so long, and I just – needed that for my confidence because it's been, I mean, just so long. And uh, it was a great feeling uh, being back there. It felt like home. So Yeah. Which one do you like more? Do you like uh, the long breakaway where you juke the guy and he stumbles down? Uh, but you turn on the afterburners. I think, Let me finish. I gave you the credit there, the speed. Yeah. Uh, which one do you, do you like or is it another type you would like better? I think I like the first one better just because I kind of had to take it from him. So it was a little bit tougher and I kind of enjoyed that one more. Did you play basketball? Show off your jump ball skills yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Old Neville Blue Jays basketball work. Um, I hate to ask it, like, what was it like? Because obviously it was tough, but you told me something very mature that you, you had to sit out 2020. Um, you, you missed 2021 and, and how it really tested your, your mental fortitude. What did you, weird way to ask the question, but what did you appreciate about that time? What do you get positive out of that now? And now getting back into the swing of things, what's that mean? I mean, it, it, it's really how much love you have for the game. Because you, you, you sit out and you're just sitting there watching other people doing something that you love. And, I mean, it, it really challenges you and it, it shows how much you appreciate it. Because once you come back, I mean, it, and then you have it taken away again, it's like, oh, no, we got to go through it all again. And then to finally be here in this position, it's been – it's been a blessing. Mm-hmm. So take us back. Like Coach wanted to give you the full uh, latitude to tell the story, as I thought it was. I don't know. I just I thought it was interesting. You told me in the off season how you ended up here with uh, a DM. A DM <laughs> uh, from Coach Burnett. Yeah. Um. He he DM'd me 
we were uh, we were in communication for a little bit on uh, Twitter, and then while you're at Cisco, at Cisco pre okay, uh, what was this? Oh, 2018, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> Coach Wilcher actually flew out. Mind you, this is two Cisco is two hours west of Dallas, so he he made the trip out. It's kind of by Abilene, if you know yeah, where that is. I do. Um, he made the trip out, watched one of the practices, reported back some good words, I guess, and then got a call from Coach Bloom. Led the nation in touchdowns, right? In touchdowns, that yes, sir. I guess, freshman year, a redshirt freshman year at Cisco. Yes, sir. Yeah. So making that transition, I talk, I could, guys could get similar answers in different sports, but in, in football, that, that's a tough transition from JUCO to D1, but you made it look – Oh, it's not easy. You, you, you performed uh, admirably there. What, what was that like that first year going back a couple of years, transitioning from the JUCO level and, and stacking on touchdowns and, and good games? Yeah. Uh, I also wanted to uh, point out that the, the academics was also uh, a step up, especially tad, from, yeah. from JUCO to Rice. Um, but luckily I had uh, uh, my former roommate, Naeem Smith, there with me. So we, we, we both relied on each other. Um, and, and helped out each other with that process. So, and he was another JUCO guy. So, it, you know, going through those times together, it, it kind of helped out. I love JUCO guys. Okay, mm -hmm. not that anyone cares about, but I used to do JUCO announcing. Different breed, mm -hmm. right? JUCO tough, mm -hmm. right? tough as a two dollar steak, right? So, well, what did that time like? How did that prepare you to uh, come here? Um, you know, you meet some guys who come from some unfortunate. Uh, situations or circumstances and again you just appreciate what you have and you see what others are going through and you know you just know that things are going to be okay because I mean again we're in a small town in Cisco so like all you have is your teammates so you heavily rely on each other and you know that just makes you appreciate the guys that you're with even more. So you obviously end up at Rice, do well. We talked about sitting out that time, but you aren't earned your sport management degree mm -hmm. and you're uh, doing the Elijah Garcia plan, working on mm -hmm. your master's in accounting. Mm -hmm. How has that been going, like, getting the, the degree mm -hmm. and, and, and working in a, in a pretty tough uh, master's program? Yeah, uh, the, the, spring, the spring was brutal, especially doing therapy and then having the, the full course load. I mean, it's, it's definitely a grind, but I mean, we're on the, the back end of it now, so it's been great and I uh, can't wait for my future. What do you want to do? Uh, that's a great question. Okay. Um, right now, I'm interested in investment banking, but we'll, we'll see where it goes. Okay. You can throw a rock in here, hit about three of those, I think, <laughs> yeah. in, in Acme Oyster House. But mm -hmm. uh, obviously, I think you would have some uh, playing days still to come. Uh, but the rest of the season, um, what do you think about the offense? Going to have Coach Tui on here next and how you guys really opened it up, obviously, against McNeese, and you want more of that coming up this year. But uh, what are some keys for the offense the rest of this season? I think the the thing I've noticed the most about this season is the, the amount of experience we have. There, I mean, there's guys at every position who, who know what to do, and it's been the previous years it seems like we've kind of struggled or it hasn't been as sharp or people are still a little hesitant on what their assignment and where they need to align. And it seems like this, the experience that everybody has and then also the camaraderie that uh, everybody feels for each other, especially like when uh, Kobe went into the game versus McNeese um, and he got his first catch. I mean, I was so excited. It was, I was more I was happier then than when I actually scored, to be honest with you. I mean, that was great seeing how happy he was. Um, so, yeah, it's just the love that we have for each other and uh, the experience that we have. I wish we had some kind of. Uh, montage photos of the Bradley Rosner hair over the years because <laughs> you and I have different hairstyles over the years. So uh, is it like a flavor of the month thing? Because you've gone longer, you've gone shorter, you've gone blonde. Um, Honestly, talk about it, that lettuce, whatever they're saying. It, it's I just let it. I just do like it's its own thing. Whatever it wants to do, I just grow it out, and it's whatever it wants to be. Okay. Yeah. So lots of cane sauce going cane through sauce, those veins. Wing stop. <laughs> Sometimes McDonald's, Hans wouldn't be happy, Roberto wouldn't be happy. Yeah, yeah. Come on, they're not watching, they're not listening, yeah. right? Uh, Let's hope not. No. But give us give us some dirt on QB here. Um, what will we know so about about him? What what will we not know? The biggest thing that about TJ is he loves to brag about his twin size bed. For some reason <laughs> for him, that is like the ultimate trophy or achievement or something. It doesn't it doesn't make sense. I don't know. Trying to think, twin size. That's pretty small, TJ. But you, you fit. I mean, you're not you're not a small guy. But 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> so weird. Uh, so there, it's fold and twin and queen. Or th- okay. Anyway, yeah. I would, I would, I did not think you were going to answer that yeah. uh, that way. Uh, finally, just in whole, uh, your time at Rice. What uh, have you enjoyed most? How Rice has set you up uh, for the future? Um, the thing I've enjoyed most at Rice is all the amazing people I've met. Um, like I said, Naeem Smith, one of my closest friends that I have. I mean, he's doing he's doing really well for himself, um, and his future looks so bright. Uh, TJ, guys like Luke. Um, it's just the, the people you meet, the relationships you create. It's, it's been amazing, and they're lifelong friends that I'll have for the rest of my life. Hey, thanks a lot. Thank you for having appreciate me. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Former Needville Blue Jay has done okay for himself. Uh, appreciate him for, for coming on. Back with uh, offensive coordinator Coach Dewey coming up next. Back at Acme Oyster House, more of the Mike Bloomgren Show from Learfield. Build it, price it, own it. Shop as in John Deere makes it as easy as one, two, three to get the John Deere tractor of your dreams. Number one, go to shop as at sfstractor.com. Select the John Deere tractor you want, add the attachments you need. Number two, select your terms. See the price along with monthly payments and apply for financing. Number three, buy your John Deere tractor from shop as and shop as will deliver it for free. Shop as makes it that easy to purchase your John Deere tractor. Build it, price it, own it. Only at shop as. All things John Deere. Houston, we have a cocktail. All Hands Can cocktails are made with six times distilled crab vodka at a sturdy 10% ABV to ensure you never have to sacrifice the quality of your provision. Now available in six natural flavors, including raspberry lemonade, ruby red grapefruit, cherry limeade, cranberry, and vodka soda. And vodka Tonic Classic. Follow the adventure on Instagram at, at Drink All Hands and try these car strength cocktails for yourself for the next game. All Hands, damn fine cocktail. Proud sponsor of Rice Athletics. Big trip on the horizon? Before you depart, you've got to park. The parking spot is a simpler, easier way to navigate airport parking, and you can save when you book online. You're guaranteed a spot, and we even pick you up at your trunk in our yellow and black spotted shuttles and take you straight to the terminal. Parking and saving come full circle at the parking spot. The parking spot, proud sponsor of Rice University. Visit theparkingspot.com to reserve your spot today. We interrupt your top 40 hits to issue this alert from the Carbach Brewing Company. In our efforts to brew our distinct and popular Hoppadillo IPA, we have unwittingly created a monster. A monster with an insatiable thirst. A monster that will not stop until it gets what it wants. An ice-cold Hoppadillo IPA. Just like the one I'm holding in my hand. Bold. Flavorful. Dry hopped. Irresistible. (laughs) Sweet Mary! Hoppadillo. Find it before it finds you. Bravely brewed in Texas by the Carbach Brewing Company. Another season of women's and men's college sports is underway. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup at L Directors Cup on Twitter and online at vdirectorscup.com. Trophies will be awarded in June 2023 to the winning institutions in all competitive divisions. Learfield Directors Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics. This is the Mike Bloomgren Show, live at Acme Oyster House. Here again, the voice of the Owls, J.P. Heath. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back here at Acme Oyster House here. We have offensive coordinator of the Blue and Gray, Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, J.P. Thanks for, for having me here. It was awesome. It was a great place. And yeah. After a great weekend, it's a lot of fun to be doing this. A uh, star-studded lineup, action-packed. A question I have never asked you, and it just came to mind, when you were playing, what was the weirdest pronunciation of your name? Because you have, like, the <laughs> coolest last name ever. But, like, some PA announcers, I mean, they, they don't always prepare as much. But the more famous and you got, I'm sure they nailed it. So did you have any weird pronunciations? Yeah, I'd have to probably go all the way back to, like, summer league baseball when I was, like, in junior high or high school just because, you know, they probably didn't practice. They just showed up, and then there's the <laughs> roster. and Tui. I mean, there was, it was Tui Asasopio. Tupi Apasopa, Tula Sanga, and then one time they didn't even say it. It was like coming up to the plate, number 25, Marcus. <laughs> and my our, my head coach is a third base coach. He's like, get out of the box. Yeah. It's Tupi Apasopa. And it had some colorful language that followed. But, yeah, it's uh, it's it's funny. It's, uh, it's phonetic. And so, really, little kids do it the best because they don't really think about it. They, yeah. they see it, and then just it just rolls off the tongue. Yeah. But, yeah, it's uh, – 
for my whole life, I've, I've probably heard every iteration <laughs> of my last name. So when did you stop playing baseball? Uh, pretty much high school. I went out okay. uh, one year in college, um, and I was, was going to play. And then you know, I had one, it was actually the spring of my junior year. So going into my senior year of high school, uh, college, wow. uh, and I was just like, man, well, I got to be out there playing left field. It's like freezing in Seattle. Like at 8 p.m., all my teammates are driving by the baseball field honking their horn saying, do you stink? And so I was like, this poor guy I'm playing left field with came around a baseball scholarship, and I, I'm just doing it so I can have peace of mind. So I was like, hey, I'm going to go focus on football. But, yeah, it was, it was something I did. I uh, actually signed um, to play both football and baseball when I wow. went to Washington. Okay. Yeah. Did not know that either. And for those that don't know, great college career, long NFL career somehow. The one person out there might not know. When did you know coaching would be a possibility? Obviously, you run paths, for those that don't know, with Coach Bloomgren. He's at the Jets, and you're, you're playing there. So when did you think, ah, I might not only like this coaching, but I might do pretty well at it? Yeah, I think from, from the beginning, you know, I, I always thought I wanted, to, you know, I wanted to play in the NFL. I wanted to be Joe Montana. I wanted to do that. <laughs> and then I always thought that I would love to be a head coach. And those were kind of like two dreams I had. Um, and I enjoyed teaching. And I think I love teaching in this, in this field, you know, on the football field. And so when my playing career got done, um, you know, I'd give it a try. But it, it was probably really actually at the time with the Jets when I was with Coach Bloomgren. Um, and there was a coach named Homer Smith who I'd met before through my college coach, New, Rick Neuheisel. Um, so he came out to visit us and talk about two-minute with the offensive staff. And so we, we, we sat next to each other on like a, a two-hour bus ride. Uh, during New York traffic, and he was asking me what I wanted to do, and uh, and so I said I think I want to coach, and so he started to ask me about it, and we just we spent that whole bus ride talking about coaching, and then he sent me a note right before he passed away, and and he's like, hey, I hope you pursue this because you know I think you'd be a r really good good at it, and be great for the the young men that you'd be able to coach, and so that kind of was like, yeah, I think I, this is something that I need to do, and then uh, probably two weeks into my first training camp when I was like a quality control GA doing everything, <laughs> making sure that the coffee pot was never empty, uh, all the odd jobs. And I remember calling my wife like at 11.45 p.m. and telling her, uh, I think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And so I love it. And so she said, all right, let's, let's go do it. Yeah, there's something about the grind, too, that, I mean, you just didn't, you just didn't stop playing and end up on third base, you know, to mix another cliche there. Uh, rising up the ranks, so we have a lot of it on the West Coast, too, and now in the offensive coordinator position. Uh, what have you liked about this challenge of, of this role, this role with, with these guys here? Yeah, it's, I, I think for me it's all about people, so I'm so grateful for Coach Boomerin for to believe in me for this, this opportunity and then really just to, uh, you know, plays are plays, and obviously we're going to try to design plays or – or reach in our bag of, uh, in, in our history of plays that we think will fit our, our scheme, our personnel. And, and it's really just getting a group of guys together to believe and, and head, head in one direction. Um, and so uh, to see the, the foundation that Coach Bloomgren um, had already set when, when he first called me about this opportunity, and I had a chance to really research the team and, and, and see what he was building, I got really excited um, just because – you know, I believe in a physical brand of football. I believe still that to win a championship, you got to play great defense and you got to run football. Now, that doesn't mean I, I don't want to throw it or believe <laughs> the passing game because I, I love that too. But yeah. I think when it comes down to it, right, you're going to have to run the ball and control the line of scrimmage to ultimately win the game. So I think those things aligned. And then again, going back to the, the people, you know, obviously this is a great place to do it at, at Rice. It has great academics and is a proud university. Um, and to build a program here, but with, with someone like Coach Bloomgren and the staff that he's brought together, that's, that, that speaks volumes to me. So that means he's recruiting the right type of young man that's going to uh, be the type of kid you want to coach. Uh, and so uh, that, that's, what, that's why I'm so excited about this opportunity and, and kind of where we're at so far at this season. Speak to the guys we have on the show here tonight with uh, what, what Bradley's done and with, with TJ. I mean, you heard his story again, which I'm sure you knew already, but – just how they mixed in with a guy like Luke McCaffrey moving to wide receiver. Uh, a lot of weapons at your disposal on the offense, and we haven't even talked about the running game yet. Yeah, just really proud of Bradley Rosner. You know, he, he talked earlier about his path the last couple of years with injury and, and dealing with certain setbacks. And and then, you know, shoot, that first game, I don't think anyone – I've never been a part of something like that um, before. And so to go through that experience and then come back and, 
and really just propel us mm -hmm. with that first uh, go ball that he caught, where he really just snatched it out of that guy's hand. I mean, he, he set the tone for our group, and so to see him and, and what he's gone through and how hard he's worked to come back and then to go through that and make those plays for us last uh, weekend is, is, is huge for our team. Uh, you know, you talked about Luke coming over. Um, just like you're – I'm not surprised, but I am surprised at the effectiveness of, of how he's been able to play given that he was playing quarterback for the last two years. I mean, he looks like he's never – you know, that's the only position that he's ever yeah. played. Like he never played quarterback before. That he should – so – He's naturally gifted, and so you know he's going through his process. He's uh, um, we got to settle him down a little bit. You know he got so excited during the game, he had a touchdown pass and kind of jumped the gun there. But uh, man, he's he works so hard, so he, he brings a great element to our, our unit that that we need a lot, a lot of energy. Uh, you know the run game with with Ari. I mean we we have like three or four guys that we really could you know just hand the ball to, and they're, and they're all a little bit different. And then you know we're getting Uriah West back, so that, that's going to be a whole nother ball of wax when when people get to see what he's capable of when he's full speed uh so I, i'm excited about that you know my goal is ho hopefully to provide some balance and that the defense can't just focus on one you know aspect of the game in terms of the run game or the pass and so uh, hopefully we can keep them guessing like we've talked before mm -hmm. i think we were able to kind of dictate to mcneese last weekend and and you know hit some rounds but also get some passes down the field and so that's the challenge again this week, and but I think that the the group of young men that we have on, on the offensive side of the ball, they're they're a joy to coach. Uh, they're all great young men like these two. Uh, you know, I haven't got the TJ because uh, I mean, here's a guy that waited all year last year. I mean, he was knocking on my door once a month, you know, telling me, "Hey, coach, I'm ready. Give me a shot. Give me a shot." And you know, we had our two guys that we were gonna give them the opportunity to do and. To his credit, he, he stayed the course and he stayed focused and he stayed prepared and he's able to come in against La Tech and, and win that game last last year and then go through a, a great battle with Wiley Green and you know lose it but then stay ready to roll and then get to the position where he could perform the way he did this past weekend. So uh, I think these two guys kind of embody the type of young men that we have in you know in the offensive unit and uh, you know they're a joy to coach and. We're looking forward to, you know, continuing things moving forward. Let's keep it going. Thank you, Coach. Oh, yeah. no problem. Always great talking. You always yep. learn something. Appreciate it. Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. Easy, easy to say, just like that. Stay tuned. Coming up next, Coach Bloom will preview those Ragin' and Cajuns coming up next. Back at Acme Oyster House. More of the Mike Bloomgren Show from the airfield. Hey, Oscar. Oscar, wake up. Hi, this is Otis and Oscar. The talking spokes oysters for Acme Oyster House? You've probably seen us on TV. My friend Oscar is, uh, sleeping. You know, we oysters like our beds. Anyway, drop by tonight for a dozen raw, a dozen char-grilled, a seafood platter or po' boy, and maybe a few laughs. Come at me, bro. Not you. Back in the oyster house. Life's more fun with seafood. Howdy Homemade Ice Cream is here. Howdy is an ice cream shop in Katy, Texas that makes ice cream in-house and has a unique mission to employ individuals that are differently abled. Stop by and enjoy some ice cream. With every scoop you buy, you help support employment for special needs. Coming to Rise Athletics venues in the fall. It's JP here to tell you that, yes, there's more Rice House content out there for you to consume. Subscribe and download the official podcast of Rice Athletics, Rice Owls Insider. Rice Owls Insider provides a unique new look at a variety of head coaches, players, and other integral voices inside the Rice Athletics department. Plus, you can find archived coaches shows as well. For the best in Rice House content, subscribe to Rice Owls Insider, the official podcast of Rice Athletics. Available on Apple, Stitcher, and Spotify. Woo! Got my nachos, got my big TV, and my favorite chair. It's game time. But you know, the only thing that would make it a little better is if I could listen to my local broadcasters while watching the game. Oh, hello. You must have wished for your game to be synced with TV and radio. I sure did. Do you have a DVR? You bet. Do you have a streaming device? Yeah. Blammo! Your game is now synced. It's that easy. Oh, boy. To see if you can get synced, head to SyncMyGame.com from Learfield. SyncMyGame.com? SyncMyGame.com. 
You're listening to the latest on Owls football with the head coach, Mike Bloomgren. Now, let's go back inside Acme Oyster House. Wrapping up another edition of the Mike Bloomgren Show. Every Monday of a game week here, 7 until 8 p.m., Acme Oyster House. Uh, head coach, Michael Desmoreau, coach, uh, co-OC last season under Billy Napier, who went to Florida. Uh, coach Desmoreau did a good job assembling his staff. 36 years young, former record-setting quarterback uh, when it was called Louisiana Lafayette. They have the nation's longest winning streak at at 16 games. Quite a, quite a, quite a team coming in, quite a program. Uh, your thoughts initially? Yeah, I mean, that winning streak speaks for itself. They've done a great job. I think Coach Napier did an unbelievable job putting that program together, building it really from the ground up. And then I think, obviously, he did not leave the cupboard bare. There's a lot of talent there. There's a lot of really good players. And it seems like they largely kept their systems in place on offense and defense. So it's not going to be too dissimilar from what they've been in the past. Uh, and they're getting similar results. I, I think the winning streak is 15, JP. I don't 15, mean to correct okay. you. Yes, That's yes. plenty. We don't want it to get to 16. <laughs> that is the bottom line there. I did not go to Rice, and I was not a math major, but the dad was. So um, speak to their tradition, their culture. They're going to bring a lot of fans, but uh, types of offense, defense schemes and whatnot. What are they trying to do? You know, when you talk about the culture, I think what you see is, uh, you know, first off, we've got a bunch of people from Louisiana that are around me, from Sanders Davis, our offensive line coach, to Sidney Davis, uh, my assistant who actually is a ULL volleyball player. Uh, so, you know, she's told me, include me in to how rowdy this group can be and, and how excited they'll be to come to Houston. And we're excited to have them, quite frankly. Offensively, you know, they're uh, a team that's going to and and really try to do some creative things in the pass game. On defense, they've turned into more of a zone coverage unit, you know, where they're going to do a lot of pressures internally and even bring the nickel slot from the field. But it's a lot of cover three, a lot of cover four, blitz zone three behind it. So uh, it's all stuff we're, we're used to seeing. And it's not going to be about special play calls in, in a game like this where you've got two talented teams. It's going to be about execution. And that's what we've got to make sure our kids are ready to do is they got to have a great week of practice and they got to go out there and explode on game day. And uh, we'll be excited for this game. This seems like, I know they schedule these years in advance, the right test at the right time. Just for, and for both teams, really, not, not, that, not that we're doing the Rage of Cajun show, but uh, the right test at the right time, especially for you guys. Yeah, I think that's a great, great way to title this thing. It's going to be a great fight, and uh, I can't wait. I, you know, and, and I go back, like when you talk about win streaks and stuff like that, uh, I remember being in Alabama in 1999. We went to Florida, and they'd won 56 straight games at the Swamp. And we beat them. And I just remember what that locker room was like. And, uh, you know, nobody gave us a chance going in. And I don't know if people will give us a chance this week or not, but I don't think me or anybody in our building cares. Like, we just want the opportunity to practice and then go play this game. And uh, certainly we'd love to have that celebratory locker room again. It's always nice. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mike Bloomgren, head coach of Rice House. Don't love you, family head coach. Stay tuned. Coming up. Uh, for the broadcast coming up, that is Saturday. We are on air at 6, 6.30 with that start time. Thanks to everybody here tonight and everybody coming on the show. Uh, star studded lineup with uh, Marcus Tuiasasopo, the one and only TJ McMahon, and, of course, Bradley Rosner. Thanks to Walter here. Thanks to Ashley back in Winston-Salem. Have a great night. God bless. Go Owls. Rice fight. We'll talk to you Saturday. Rice in Louisiana coming up. It's Rice football from Learfield. <laughs> On the Rice Sports Network from Learfield, you've been listening to the Mike Bloomgren Show live from Acme Oyster House. Acme Oyster House.